So we're gonna do tracheostomy now, uh, or tracheostomy care. Yeah, we have a lot of ingredients, so Kat, bring us do this one. So this is just a tracheostomy kit. Now, if you're using a disposable cannula for your patient, some of the supplies that come in this kit, you're not gonna need. Um, but if you're using one that has to be cleaned and or is a permanent type of device, then you're gonna have to have the whole kit. Next, we have the sterile gloves. Make sure to get the correct size, and I'd always recommend to get an extra pair of uh, sterile gloves. So a drain sponge, and that's gonna fit up under the tracheostomy when we clean, and that just helps protect the skin. Next, we have a suction device. So the suction device is sterile, and we're going to suction the catheter. Next we have extra drainage sponges, as well as a few pipe cleaners. Then we have sterile water, and you guys always want to make sure that it's either sealed or dated correctly. And last but not least, we have our two handy dandy items. So the obturator is a device that you're gonna use in case you lose your airway, in case the patient maybe coughs out the trach. Now the other piece is actually a permanent trach device. Now Mike also has the Shiley box, and that's gonna be the one that we use for this one because it's a disposable inner cannula. So we're actually not gonna have to do any of the cleaning, and some of these cannulas actually say do not clean. So we're actually just gonna be able to pop out the inner cannula here and pop in a new one. All right, now when it comes time to actually suction and change the cannula here, we wanna make sure that the head of the bed is upright and even sitting on one side if necessary. All right, now that we donned our sterile gloves, I'm gonna keep those alligator arms making sure we're completely sterile. So I've opened up our suction kit so everything's sterile in here. I'm gonna make sure that I opened up our little water container and Kat's gonna help me here by pouring. Now again, I'm not touching anything in the sterile field. Now the next big step is to set up your suction device. Really the trickiest part is knowing which hand's clean and which hand's dirty. So I'm gonna set up my 14 French here and put it in my sterile field and grab my suction device. So now this hand is dirty. Disconnect the old suction and apply the new 14 French here. So make sure you get a full fistful because when you're suck putting it in right here, you wanna make sure you know which hand's clean, which hand's dirty. Now, when we're going in, the biggest thing is you wanna pre-oxygenate. So we're pre-oxygenating before and after just to make sure our patient doesn't go blue. So assuming that we are ready pre-oxygenated, I'm going to only suction out. This is huge. We do not ever want to go in holding down the plunger here, basically holding down the hole, because we're going to cause more trauma to that bronchi area, and we do not want to do that. So what you might notice is that we've forgotten to turn on the suction. Now, you feel like things have to go in a stepwise motion, and that's just not always reality. So Mike, can you show us how to get through and now turn on the suction? Because we've got a sterile hand and a clean hand. Of course, so using my dirty hand here and applying a good dexterity, I'm gonna make sure we have adequate suction and making sure that it's on. You can even suction some water if you need to, just to make sure it's okay. Then make sure to not hold the hole when you're going in only coming out, and you wanna make sure that suction is less than 10 seconds. So when we're going in, we're gonna be putting it in. And he's using a little bit of a circular motion to make sure that he gets all of the walls of the trachea and really try to loosen up that suction. And what you're gonna notice, he's pulling out, and he's gonna pull out some secretions but you should also really expect the patient to cough and cough up more secretions because he's loosened them up. So it's totally normal to have to make a second or third pass and try to get those out. And just expect, just like Kat said, expect your patient just to cough really bad. And that's totally normal because this patient doesn't have the normal protections that would keep us coughing and keep all that mucus free from our lungs and from our trachea. So um, this is all totally normal. The really cool thing about having a disposable inner cannula is that we don't have nearly as much cleaning and work to do. So I can just pop this one out 
and then Mike can just pop that one back in. Now this one has little squeezies and that's how we clip it in. But what Mike actually has is one that just screws in and it's not any more complex. So he's being real careful to just hold the outside, right? Because we don't want to introduce more bacteria into the lungs. So you're going to hold it right here. And then he's just going to pop that in and make sure that it's secure. Yep, sliding so being aseptic there. So after you have felt that you can feel in your hands that it's locked, and what you're going to notice on the side is that there's two little dots that actually line up and show you that it's locked in place as well. Also, make sure that you don't put your face in <laughs> front of the cannula. Yeah. Um, if you've been a nurse long enough, you'll learn that the hard way possibly, but don't, foot, don't put your face in front of the cannula. That's a good way to, to, to get in trouble there. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. If you just have gauze, then you can put, you can put saline on the gauze and clean under it. Mm -hmm. If you have those Q-tips, then you get the Q-tips moist and then you clean under it. And arguably the Q-tips are actually a lot easier. So you'll notice that I'm holding on to it with one hand. You don't really want to take the ties off and not be holding on to it. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have with one hand. So if Mike was doing this on his own, he would just hold on to it and then he's getting right up in there next to that cannula site, right into where the stoma actually opens into the skin. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing is you always want to keep one hand on it because if a patient coughs and let's say that it wasn't inflated all the way or something happens, that thing can fly and across the room and now you have a compromised airway. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to take the drain sponge and it's already got these little slits on it and you have to be a little bit clever about it and you don't usually want to take both sides off at the same time. But if you do, you can just hold on to it. Shimmy it around there. And you're, yep, you're just shimmying it around so that it's nice and secure. And this will help clean up a lot of the mucus that will get stuck around the trach. And once again, you know, you're in the soak zone right here. <laughs> so you do not want to put your face in front of that open hole right there. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty easy to do and you're just going to make sure, say it's adjustable, so you're just going to continue to adjust that until it is a nice secure fit and you can only fit it like a finger in there. And that wraps up trait care. <laughs>